Hi, I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse for your Environmental Minute. I'm on location in Phoenix, Arizona at the American Academy of Environmental Medicine Conference and we're interviewing Dr. Martin Paul, a PhD in biochemistry. Hi, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Paul, tell us about you and your credentials. Well, I, I got my PhD in biochemistry and genetics at Caltech way back in the dark ages. And I was on the faculty at Washington State University uh, for many years, and I retired as, uh, as uh, Professor Emeritus there and, uh, in biochemistry and basic med medical sciences. So I have, I, I have a good background in both medical issues and in uh, basic biochemistry and physiology and genetics. What are EMFs, or electromagnetic fields? It's been claimed that the only thing they can do is heat things, like heating things in your microwave oven. And what my recent paper shows is not only that's not true, but it shows how they work on our bodies. They work on some channels in the outer membrane of cells. And they activate these channels, and the channels open up, and calcium ions flow into the cell. And it's the excess calcium in the cell that causes all the problems. Cancer, problems with the brain function, many problems with the brain function, problems with hormone controls, problems with the immune system, and problems in a number of other cell types as well. Where are we finding electromagnetic fields in our environment? We have uh, EMFs from cell phones, from cordless phones, from um, cell phone towers, uh, from smart meters, from uh, any kind of wireless communication device. Um, and uh, those aren't the only, only places, but those are sort of the main ones. What are the dangers of cell phones, and is there a difference in the danger between adults and children? They do differ between, between uh, adults and children, uh, in part because the thickness of the skull is different, and therefore the penetration of, uh, into the brain is different. And so, you know, for, for young children it's particularly problematic. Uh, and, you know, the, we even have wireless devices for babies now, which is really kind of incredible. What makes one appliance more dangerous than another? Part of the problem is that the very units we're using to measure these things are the wrong units. We're, we're, we're comparing them in terms of what they can do to heat things, but that's not how they're acting. So we're, we're, we're looking at the wrong units of measure of, you know, what we have to do is look at biological effects and, and we don't, you know, and, and, that, and we're not doing that as a way of measuring, um, you know, how dangerous they are. And that's really what needs to be done because the different fields the different kinds of fields, you know, say you use one cell phone versus another. They're not necessarily going to have the same amount of danger completely apart from the question of whether they put out more EMFs or less. They could put out, put out the same level of EMFs and one might still be much more dangerous than the other. We just don't know about those things and they need to be measured. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul, for your research, and thank you for being a guest on our show. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm Dr. Adrienne Sprouse, and this is your Environmental Minute.